anyway, um, as we enter into the in, enter into the Shabbat for uh, rest and refreshing, as we continue to battle on the walls um, for Jerusalem, for Israel, for the remnant around the world, uh, for the fullness of the nations and the fullness of the bride in this hour, um, I just really searched and said, Lord, I, I'm I'm so full. Um, I'll have to be really honest with you. I, um, I, I received the Israel mantle from my mother many years ago down in the Kidron Valley. I was raised in a home that was very Israel centric. And um, in the last month or so, I've really wrestled with the Lord um, as Jacob wrestled, not in a bad way, but um, wrestled with the Lord because the mantle at times feels extremely heavy. And I'm sure many of you feel this. And um the overwhelming sometimes sense of empathetic trauma that I feel with Israel and and uh, how it really just disrupts my day. And I've learned to embrace that because I think it's from the Father. And if you're struggling with that, I think we need to just embrace it because I think he's giving us a new meaning, a, a, a deeper meaning of mourning with those who mourn and rejoicing with those who rejoice. So uh, I do think we need to embrace this time of morning uh with our jewish brethren and i know what has mentioned has been mentioned before not only because of what's happening at the hague but also all through the week that tomorrow is international remember international holocaust remembrance day so the lord just sort of dropped in my spirit for us to talk about remembrance today be being a remembering people and not a forgetful people um and not just in the physical but especially in the spiritual, and I think it it speaks to us even no matter where we are in our life as as elderly or grandparents or parenting or young, uh, wherever we are, um, the need to be reminded to be rememberers. And so, um, tomorrow being International Holocaust Remembrance Day, of course, it was set aside in 2005. I find it very interesting. Here we are with the Hague giving this kind of um, verdict and info and continuation of their, um, you know, absurd accusations um, here on the weekend that the UN set aside in 2005 for the nations to remember the horrors of the Holocaust. And of course, it comes on the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. So um, there is a quote by a German poet I think he was born in 1920, Richard von um, Weizsäcker. And um, this is the full quote, but this is, uh, and then they, the Jews use the phrase without quoting the entire thing. Seeking to forget makes exile all the longer. The secret of redemption lies in remembrance. And so the first time I heard this came from one of my dear Jewish friends in Israel, and he quoted, remembrance brings redemption, forgetfulness leads to exile. And we see all through the Bible that that is true, that exile is part of the discipline of the Lord um, to Israel when they would forget to remember what he called them to remember. Um, in the Torah portion, this, this um, weekend, you know, we just went through Exodus 10 through 12 and um, the, the Passover the Passover instructions were given, and uh, again, the Lord comes forward and says, be sure that when your children ask why you're doing this, that you give them um, the reason for this remembrance, and that they are to feel as though they're standing in the place of the very first um, Passover night, uh, the day that redemption was brought forth. And then we move into this Torah portion, which is Exodus 13 through 17, 1 or something like that. And um, a very interesting thing in this particular uh, portion that kind of gets overlooked, it's not emphasized in the portion, but in um, Exodus 13, 19, and it says, And Moshe took with him the bones of Yosef, who had exacted an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will be sure to take notice of you, then you shall carry up my bones um, from here with you. Uh, and I find it interesting, Moses probably the busiest of the Hebrews at that moment, right? <laughs> In leadership, leading these uh, 
these slaves, these refugees out of Egypt under the mighty hand of the Lord, that he remembered the oath given to Joseph. And this had been a long time. He remembered the oath given to Joseph. So it, it leads us into a, um, um, it's a perfect segue into why sh we should remember. Um, in Dennis Prager, I don't know if any of you have his, um, the rational Bible by him in Genesis and Exodus. I think he's working on Leviticus or either Deuteronomy right now. Um, in, in this Torah portion, he actually begins to break down um, the unique significance of, of remembering. And um, he gives he gives the six commandments of remembrance that are given in the Torah. And I want to just give those quickly. And then I want us to talk about the nine reasons why it's important for us to remember. And... Um, First, the six commandments, of course, the Sabbath. And here we are remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And uh, the word remember, zechor, in Hebrew, of course, means more than just a mental remembrance. Oh, it's oh, it's Shabbat. It's a marking in our life. It's something that actually is marked by our life that someone else can see. So when you think of remembrance, don't think of just the mental memory the remembrance in the Bible is an act. It's an outward act that marks our faithfulness and obedience to God's commandment to us. So the Sabbath, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And then um, remembering the Exodus when we get to Pesach, Passover, remembering that uh, we ate unleavened bread. And so for those seven days in our home, there is no leaven so that we can remember how God provided for us. And of course, we remember Yeshua, um, the bread of life um, without sin. And then, then he tells them in Deuteronomy, don't forget the things that your eyes saw and your ears heard at Sinai, the giving of the instructions of the Lord, the giving, the revelation of his beautiful moral way of living in the midst of the ancient Near East and pagan nations. Even today, they stand totally set apart and a stark contrast to the culture today, his instructions and commandments. So he says, don't forget the receiving of those. And we celebrate that at Shavuot. When we celebrate the giving of the spirit, we also celebrate the giving of the, uh, of the Torah, the instructions of the Lord. And here we are in the middle of this war with Hamas. And he tells us to remember Amalek. I mean, that's what the Hague wanted to bring up was that God said that, you know, uh, the scriptures and even at the UN, there's actually an inscription for genocide against, you know, using the scripture out of the Bible for Amalek. So it's such a double standard and a forked tongue coming from the nations uh, when they when they accuse Israel. And it says in Deuteronomy 25, remember what Amalek did to you on your journey after you left Egypt, how undeterred by fear of God they were and how they cut down all the stragglers in your rear. And so we are not to forget Amalek. And Israel was right to call Hamas Amalek. And God tells them that they will be at war with Amalek, and they will be until Yeshua returns. This is a, a vibrant spirit in the enemy of Israel. And uh, for the nations to mock it or to use it in a way of accusation against Israel is just a total stick a finger in the eye of God because he told us to remember Amalek. Then number five, he told us to remember the golden calf and the great grievous sin um, that this was and that they angered the Lord. He said, never forget how you provoked your God to anger. And I think the nations and many, um, many Christians around the world that are lukewarm have forgotten that they provoke the Lord to anger when they walk against his covenant with his people and when we don't walk in covenant with his people. And then the sixth one is God's punishment of Miriam uh, for speaking ill of Moses. And, and of course the Jews believe and, and say that the reason why that one of the reasons the temple was destroyed in 70 AD was because of Lashon Hara, which means that evil speak against the brother. 
And we are, we're told over and over by Paul that we really need to watch that. James talks to us about watching our tongue. So, and, and even in our watches, as we discuss the evils of the world, we must really be careful. It's not our place to curse the, e the evil man. It's not our place to, to use our mouths to curse. It's our, it's our mouths to herald in the words of God and the prophecies of God that uh, will bring about his word on the evil and wicked in the world. And so the sixth thing was to remember um, the negative, the negative words that came out of Miriam's um, mouth and how she suffered um, leprosy because of her Lashon Hara. So <clears throat> we have those six remembrances in the Torah that God continues to remind them of to remember because they will continue to be thorns in their side will continue to cause a disconnect of fellowship with God and a disconnect of fellowship with their brother. And um, so with that, let's look at some reasons why we remember. And um, as Carrie finished up and said what she said in the last hour, she she really resonated with my heart because this is something I've been encouraging friends of mine with telephone calls. I'm I'm on calls all week with friends around the U.S. and Israel and just trying to exhort people, people wanting to know what they can do, how they can pray. And when she talked about that we can't stay static on the walls when it comes to being an intercessor. We must be willing to be the answer to our own prayers. And that means that if you don't have a Jewish person in your life and in your community, you start praying for the Lord to give you one. Because he wants us to be able to tangibly love our Jewish friends. And um, before I go into these nine reasons of remembering, I just want to share that I've been very discouraged by the silence of the church in my area. I live in the south of South South in the U.S., what was considered the Bible Belt. And yes, there are churches that there are. There is a very minute, small amount of churches that are speaking truth from their pulpit, that their churches are been have been mobilized to help in the war effort. And I praise the Lord for them. But when I think of Germany and the few righteous Gentiles that raised their heads during that time, and I look at the church today more involved in building their kingdom and their ministry and not walking in alignment with God's heart with what's happening in the world today, the Middle East being the centerpiece of what God is doing in the world today. I'm, I'm, I'm discouraged. And, um, and so when Carrie said that, uh, I'm meeting with a pastor this coming week that their church is doing a lot. And he was upset with a letter that I sent out to many pastors um, asking why there was so much silence. And he said he didn't feel like the letter represented him. And I, I'm very grateful that the letter did not represent him. Um, <clears throat> and I certainly hope I didn't cause him offense. But, but the problem is what Carrie said, why it resonates, and I want you to hear this. It's one thing for us to really be surrendered to the covenant God has with Israel, the land and the people there, and especially with what's going on. But I find the church in general is disinterested in their local Jewish community. It's like there's a, there's a disconnect that these are the children of Israel. And while they may they're, they're living in non-belief. They may be liberal. They may be conservative. It doesn't matter. I can tell you that my local once lived there. And so um, this pastor hasn't contacted the temple here. And so that will be part of my, that will be part of my discussion with them is that, that we, we need to see the Lord's hand in, in the Jewish community worldwide, globally in the diaspora, and um, especially with raging anti-Semitism. And so as we remember International Holocaust Remembrance Day comes to us, I'd like to say, let's remember the Jew. 
Let's remember our Jewish neighbors. Let's remember our Jewish friends. Let's remember Jews that we met in meetings and acquaintances. Let's reach out to them just in love and say, I don't really have the answer to what's going on, but I just want you to know that I love you and I'm praying for your community. And if there's anything that I can do, you know, Paul tells us and exhorts us not to forget the Jew because of what they've given us, how we are so indebted to them. So number one, I wanted to say that we need to remember our Jewish friends today in our local communities. Um, and I appreciated so much Carrie saying that. So I'm going to briefly run through these. And um, <clears throat> one of the reasons we remember is remembering endows the history with meaning and significance. If we don't remember history, good or bad, or the event, and act like it never occurred, we know the old saying, it's bound to repeat itself. And that's why Holocaust education has been so very important over the years. It's taken about 70 years for the world to forget or start denying the Holocaust. It's only taken eight to 10 days for the world and the nations to start denying October 7th. So we're in a ramp up of forgetfulness among the nations. And then remembering enables us to learn from history. What, why did that happen? Uh, we're still delving into that. It's still a hard question. How could the Holocaust happen in a Christian nation? German Christians were strong Christians. How could it happen? Um, <clears throat> and so how could all of the crazy, absurd rhetoric come from Christians today in the midst of what happened in October 7th and the sovereign right of Israel to defend themselves from Amalek? So it, it, that's why God told them to remember the Exodus. Again, we must remember our history. Number three, remembering leads to wisdom. Uh, without remembrance, there is no wisdom. I mean, why do, we, why do we want to uphold our elderly and wise older people in our families and in our churches and in our communities? because they've been there, done that. And some of them have been through horrific things. And some of them made awful mistakes that they learned great and gracious uh, lessons from, from the Lord. And their wisdom can keep us from making those same mistakes. And, and those wisdoms can begin to in, in, imbue wisdom into our own lives as we walk in a more wise way. So wisdom is learning from our own lives and from the lives of others. Um, another reason we need to really be connected to our Jewish friends and, of course, especially those in Israel who are experiencing so much. Remembering makes the moral progress of, civ of civilization possible. I think this is an interesting one that Dennis Prager brings out because we need to know our moral progress, and we also need to know our moral regress. And we see both, don't we? And I think uh, the darkness and the light are becoming a very stark line in the sand. And I think the depravity of morality in the world today stands in stark contrast to the um, calling of the bride to be this radiant, pure, and spotless, and holy remnant before the Lord and before the nations. And we should look very, very odd to the moral depravity around us. And um, fifthly, uh, remembering links us with those who came before us and reminds us that we are part of an ongoing people and an ongoing faith. And um, for the Jew, even, even your more secular Jew that just observes uh, a Passover with a family that, in, that, that observes that, or maybe going to the synagogue on Yom Kippur, but that the other um, <clears throat> calendar, uh, the other things that God's commanded on his calendar don't enter into their lives, um, they, they do remember, they're linked with their past. Um, I do think it's interesting, and some of you may know this, that there is an organization that is mobilizing um, families and couples 
around Israel, and I think some Jewish families outside of the, uh, I think some are doing it in the U.S. as well. Um, they're linking with Jews that have not been keeping the Shabbat, and they're asking them to come alongside those who are fighting uh, in the war that can't be home to keep Shabbat with their families every Friday night. They are asking them to keep the Shabbat in, in honor of that person, that soldier, or that battalion. And they're filming what that Shabbat is becoming, is beginning to mean to them. I mean, isn't it amazing how the Lord works? He uses, he uses the darkness to promote light. And so many young couples are giving testimony of how it is beginning to be very meaningful for their families to return to the Shabbat table and to not only do it for the soldier, but they're finding great blessing and um, a remembrance of who they are as the Jewish people. So uh, again, remembering links us with those who came before us and link, link us with our faith. So we pray that their faith will be deepened by doing that. Remembering ensures that, that, that those who have suffered and perished are not forgotten. Of course, Holocaust remembrance is all about that. We also remember those who sacrificed their lives in rescue and refuge, sacrificed their lives in hiding Jews. And um, I'm actually holding our 10th annual Holocaust remembrance next Sunday. Um, we couldn't this Sunday because the temple has something, an anniversary they're celebrating. And uh, we are bringing uh, rescue stories from World War II and rescue stories from October 7th and drawing the parallels so that we do not forget those who have fallen, those who have perished, and also those who risk their lives to keep it, to keep more of that from happening. And so remembrance is very important that we do not forget those who have suffered and perished. And we continue to remember those who have been so traumatized still dealing with injuries, still dealing with loss, still dealing with kidnapped loved ones. And um, we remembering is so very important. Remembering ensures that evil is not forgotten and just allowed to go into the trash heap of history, that we, that we don't focus on the evil, but we remember Amalek. We remember how evil comes about. We remember how evil um, attacks and seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we cannot forget evil. Um, there's a lot of people that just want to focus on good, goodness, and the love of God. And in many of the families that lived along the southern border uh, were very much um, peaceniks. Y'all know that. They loved the Gazans. They assisted them. They helped them. They cared for them. They ate with them. Um, they showed incredible kindness to them. And uh, yet this happened to them. And so they're in a position of totally reorienting their lives around um, the truth of what happened and not forgetting the evil as hard as it is, as horrific as it is, it cannot be forgotten. And then remembering is only, it sort of repeats itself, is the only way to keep from repeating the mistakes of the past. And we've already sort of mentioned that. And the, the ninth thing Dennis Prager puts down is that remembering is by ensuring that goodness and good people are not forgotten, makes gratitude possible, makes enduring gratitude possible. Without remembrance, there's no wisdom, there's no gratitude, and there's no faith. So remembering is a very, very um, important part of our lives. In a prayer time this week with a couple of friends of mine, they're, they're young, they have young families, life is hectic at times with two young children in both their families. And um, we, were, we were praying and thanking the Lord for the faithfulness in our marriages this past year and what he had done in our husbands, what he'd done in us and what he's, what he's doing in our children. And I just reiterated to them that on the toughest days when you feel like your marriage has taken three steps back, or, or something that you've accomplished, that the Lord has accomplished in your family, feels like it's, it's, it's regressing or something, that we always take the time to stop and remember his faithfulness. Look back over the last year in that particular manner in your life, what he's done in your life, and, and, and recount the blessings of faithfulness of God. And I know that many of my Israeli friends 
are spending, I've encouraged them to, to recount the faithfulness of God over these last many, many years in Israel and how he has brought them through and how he is and how even in his discipline, he has stood with them and shown them great mercy and, and has, and has been their deliverer. And so I just, in the, in their darkest conversations I have with them, I call them to remember, remember the God who is faithful to you. And many are doing that. And um, they're, they're, they're seeking the Lord and they're seeking um, that God that someone told them about that's been faithful to Israel. And so <clears throat> as we celebrate this Shabbat and as we move into International Holocaust Remembrance Day on the wake of the Hague's ridiculous accusations, we remember that God is faithful. He is watching over his word to perform it. And even some of the things that are happening in the Hague Remember that some of these things God's ordaining, as hard as it is, God is ordaining it to bring about a shaking among his people that they will not only return home, but they'll return to him. And so we, we need to be people of remembrance so that we can, in, 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 a, in a time of despair, in a time of questioning, um, I've been on a couple of Zoom phone calls with a couple of different congreg Jewish congregations, and I I hear them wrestling with the rising anti-Semitism in their communities, and they're wrestling with it, and they don't know what to do with it, and they're saying, "Where is where is our help? Where is everybody?" And so I'm just like like Carrie did. I want to just exhort you for you to be a person of remembrance so that you can bring that that conversation of faithful the faithfulness of God and his faithfulness to them and um his faithfulness to rise to raise up a remnant like us to love them to stand with them to remember with them their God who's our God and their people who is our people as Ruth said and um that we that we lead the way in helping them remember all the that God has done for them in the darkest moments, in the most joyous moments. And so um, I, I, I just want to, I, I, that, that's really all I have. If we want to, um, uh, if we want to pray into these things, into remembrance, um, I guess we'll still do communion. Um, I've got my, my elements ready. If we're going to do communion at the end of bringing Shabbat, um, Fred, what would you would you like us to do some time uh, time for Denise, uh, yeah. Denise, I think it, it is a time for um, um, just this remembering thing is a big deal. Yes, and um, it was when Israel forgot what God did. I mean, it didn't take very long. A couple of days after they crossed over the Red Sea, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> they were mumbling and grumbling and wanted to go back into captivity. And that's a huge issue for us all because we have mindsets that we need to overcome and uh, mindsets that hold us back from our inheritance as well. We've got these railroad tracks in our heads that keep us full from our full inheritance and we forget what God has done for us. Yeah. Um, so I think it'd be good if we just prayed into that whole thing because it's vital for the watchman to get rid of those old shelves of disappointment, you know, maybe offense um, yeah. that keep us from seeing the true nature of God and what he's doing for us now. So I would, I would like to see us go into a time of prayer. Father, we just... Father, we are a forgetful people. We remember all the wrong things. We remember the harm done to us, the offense brought to us. We we remember we remember evil and let it sit within us to bring bitterness or despair or hatred or an unrighteous anger. We remember a lot of things, Lord, but we're very forgetful of the things you've called us to remember. 
and in our own lives, Father, we're so quick to remember the bad day or the bad situation. So, Lord, I, I just ask you in my life to purify me. Make me a person of remembrance of you. And make me write on my heart the things out of your word, the Torah, that you want me to remember. Not to speak ill of someone like Miriam did. Especially with leadership and the falling of leadership. And we're, we're all just flesh men and women. Father, help us to remember that it's not our place for Lashon Hara for us to speak evil. Father, help us to remember. Help us to remember our indebtedness to the Jewish people. The oracles, your oracles that they preserved for us down through the centuries and millennia. Father, how they kept your holy days, how they did in practice remember your holy days that we might see them, know them, and remember them ourselves today as we draw closer to you and closer to your son's return. Father, may we be a people that every morning, as we remember your faithfulness, that we would awaken with thankfulness on our lips, that maybe before we even step out of bed, we name 10 things we are faithful for that very morning. Because thankfulness is remembering. Thankfulness reminds us that it is you who gives us sleep, who awakens us, who orders our steps, who brings joy, who brings sorrow, who brings us through every storm. So, Lord, we thank you that you've given us the ability to remember your ways, to remember your commandments. But in remembering, Father, may we do it with a heart aligned with you. Not out of legalism, not out of ritual, not out of religion, but Father, solely because we love you, do we want to walk in your instructions. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a time of remembering the Holocaust. Father, I pray that we will not be so quick to forget what happened October 7th. Father, it's a very key marker in what you're doing in the Middle East. Help us, Father, to carry the remembrance of it in a way that, in a way that honors you as hard as it is. Help us to carry the remembering of it with our Jewish friends. Help us to be burden bearers for them. Father, as the nations outside of Israel turn, turn against her, it is so paramount that we show physical, natural, sacrificial love for our Jewish friends in this hour. We've got to take it up a notch. We can't just pray. We can't just send money. We have got to be the living, walking example of Yeshua in this hour. So, Lord, give us those avenues. Give us those opportunities. And give us the strength to bear up in remembrance for your people. We ask all of this in the name of Yeshua. I'd like us to pray into something specific <clears throat> because I've been hearing for several months um, the door of hope in the Valley of Achor, in the Valley of Troubles, that we as watchmen um, are going to have a ministry of a, a door of hope. It may be a compilation of, uh, or a platform on which we can land and find different places where we can contribute and offer that door of hope. Could we pray specifically into that? There's different ideas floating around, but nothing has landed yet. And I'm sure it's because of the time and the issues of, involved with the war. But 
uh, let's, um, could we pray into that? I'd really value that. And for people, if you know things that are out there that would be things that we can ex extend our helping hand, um, <clears throat> please, uh, let's, let's pray into that. So let me just, let me just add to that before I'd like somebody else to pray into that is that, um, there may be many people on this call and I have to be careful what I say, but many of you know, there's a huge remnant, not just in America, but globally that is preparing for harder days. And that is that, um, that Valley, the Valley of Acor and us yeah. being there to offer that hope and love. And so, um, there is much I can't share on this particular call. There is much <laughs> that God is doing in the supernatural right now that is yeah, blowing yeah. our mind in preparation. So yes, let's 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 pray into those opportunities that are going to be given to us. Father, it's your word that you you formed that you would uh, uh, open a door of hope in the Valley of Acor. We're laying it before your feet, Father, and I'm praying for a practical walking out of that. We can't do anything unless you show us uh, the practical ways in which we can do this and the wise ways in which we can do this. Father, I call forth that door to open in Jesus' name, and I pray for active discussions on this that will help us land our feet squarely on the ground for effective ministry in Jesus name. Yeah, I, I would just like to highlight uh, this, this very important word on remembrance. The Israelites, that was one of their problems uh, from situation to situation. They didn't remember God's faithfulness. So they would complain. Uh, they would challenge Moses leadership and the disciples as well. Uh, when Jesus, uh, Jesus told them, do you remember when there uh, were 5,000 people and we fed them, they forgot from situation to situation. So there's a real need to be steadfast and faithful and not to waver. Uh, so father, I, I believe this is an important attribute, Lord God, as you say, uh, Yeshua yourself, uh, he who endures to the end, the same will be uh, delivered. Uh, and when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? So I pray you would help us uh, when the challenges come uh, through many different avenues and pressures. And uh, we kind of know from Scripture what's ahead. And yeah, we don't know from day to day. So I just pray you'd help us remain steadfast, unmovable uh, in you, Lord God. In Yeshua's name, amen. Yes, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for those that you are already speaking about this door of hope. And it's very much on my heart. And uh, I want to thank you, Lord, for the... Um, boldness that these people are going out after creating or rather co-laboring with you to create a door of hope for Israel. So Father, I just want to bless these people, Lord God, some we know, some we don't know, Lord God, some that are still uh, hidden, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, and we ask you to bless them in everything that they need. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. I was just thinking of the valley of uh, Achor in Joshua 6 and 7 and how they had taken the things that God had said he wanted consecrated unto himself and brought actually the judgment of the Lord. And I pray, Father, in the name of Yeshua, that even as Israel stands in battle today, Lord, that they remember to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due your name. Lord, how many times you went before your people in battle in the scriptures. And Lord, it was when Jehoshaphat really knew that praise would go before the battle. And I just thank you and praise you, Father, that even 
today that same valley of bitterness and bitter tears and bitter uh bitter remembrance of the sin god that there is hope because there's also the valley of Makkah, the valley of weeping that turns to joy and we thank you and praise you lord that as we walk through these valleys that lord you're in the place of bringing us through the valley and Israel is coming through and you will bring her through because you will watch over your promises to bring them to pass. And even though Baca in Psalm 84 was rendered as a weeping uh, valley, what joy it was for those that drew their strength from you, Lord, and who set their minds on the pilgrimage. And Lord, we too have set our hearts and our mind on that pilgrimage for the eternal Jerusalem. And Lord, as we walk through the valley of weeping, may it become a place of refreshing springs and an, uh, the autumn rains that would clothe it with blessings. And so, Father, as even today, my heart is preparing for the service tomorrow. I'm so enriched by those that were in the Holocaust that spoke into our lives that we met, that we spent time with, and they have gone on board to receive their reward but i pray father for those that are still alive those father that are in the land and those that have not gone to the land but they have survived the holocaust but god we want them to come into your kingdom to have the knowledge of the son who really was there all along and who is there today so, Father, I pray that for those who are continually mourning and weeping and for those whose memories have been stirred up, as we've heard so many times on Global Watch from our precious sister in Israel who takes care of the Holocaust survivors. Father, I pray that those tears would turn to tears of joy. Lord, I pray for a revelation of messiah for your people and in the synagogues lord tomorrow i know that there are many that will light the earthside candles and that there will be um that time of remembering but father i also thank you that there's a time of remembering those that stood with your people those that continue to stand with your people that mourned with your people that wept with your people and rejoice as they come into your kingdom and so father we are asking knowing that all of heaven rejoices when even one comes lord may you bring many into your kingdom there in this time and in this season in the name of yeshua abba we just thank you for for the gift of history lord to see your faithfulness from the beginning of time as we walk with you and as we walk away from you, Lord, that you are always there with us, Lord. And as we come up on Holocaust Remembrance Day, you give us these days mm -hmm. to remember with the, with the feasts and the different holy days, Lord, that as we cycle around, it's always in our mind. We, because after a year, we start to forget and you mm -hmm. bring it back to our attention, Lord, and we thank you for that. We also thank you for those that have who have looked at history, Lord, to prepare for the future, to help those in need, Lord, to bring those home to Israel who are wanting to, who are yearning to, Lord, or who are driven there out of their, you know, unconsciously or just out of fear, Lord. We just ask for an outpouring of blessing on those that are preparing, Lord. Um, we also ask for a blessing and uh, just a hope to be given to Israeli people, Lord, as they are searching for who they are, for who you are, Lord, and for the Jewish communities all over the world, Lord, especially on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, Lord, that the church will stand alongside the Jewish communities to be a beacon of love and hope, Lord, of who you are. And we just thank you for that opportunity. Amen.
Uh, so, Lord, I, I thank you that you showed me this last week, the importance of thankfulness and gratefulness. Uh, and I pray for myself and all of us uh, that as a body, we can remember more and, and really focus more on all the, the wonderful breakthroughs that you've given us and not, never forget them. So thank, we thank you for that. And thank you for a community of gratefulness, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Again, I want to remind y'all of that quote. This, this the, remembrance brings redemption. Forgetfulness leads to exile. I think that's something worth writing down and sticking in your Bible. <laughs> so <laughs> um, <clears throat> sometimes we, we need to be reminded of that. So yes, Lord, if you've got your elements, <clears throat> Abba, Father, Yeshua, our Redeemer, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who brings the bread from the earth. Father, we praise you that your Son has not only come to die in our place and remove our sins from us through forgiveness and his redemption, but we thank you for the resurrection and the promise of his return, that life came out of the ground and we are promised eternal life with you. No matter the difficulties we're in, no matter the situation, Lord, we are promised tomorrow with you. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for how you provide for us now and how you've already made provision for our inheritance in the future. We give you glory. As we lift our cup, Lord, we thank you, Father, that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross. And Lord, may we be a people of joy in the midst of sorrow. May we be a people of great joy, enduring difficulties, persecution, and suffering that comes to the body of Christ because you told us we would live lives like you to be purified. And as Yeshua was our example in suffering, Father, may we suffer <clears throat> if you call us to suffering. <clears throat> may we do it in a way that examples the Lord, Yeshua. Father, we thank you for the blood that washes away. We thank you that it washes us white as snow. Though our sins be as scarlet, they will be as white as wool. So, Lord, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, bore pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Father, thank you for your son's blood. And we thank you, Father, that our Redeemer lives <clears throat> and he is coming again as king of the Jews, as king of the world. And we remember our salvation so freely given and brought to us through your people, the Jews, and our Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Denise, that was an amazing focus for today and with Holocaust Remembrance Day tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> you know, one, one word I just have for that is that we really must remember what God has done for us, who we are in Christ for the um, preparations for the coming days. The enemy wants us to focus on all the negative things and the horrible things that are be happening in the earth. Um, but please remember the blood of the lamb and the bread and communion. We're taking um, communion every day and watching what we allow into our eye and our ear gate. The enemy wants to suck us into the negativity. And yes, it's important to stay wise in what's happening in the in the world, but you can do that. You don't have to be looking at horrible pictures that is very hard to re ever re um, erase from your head. So watch your eye and your ear gaze, be wise and be in the word and strong in the Lord. <laughs> so God bless you all. And we will be back. Um, to do, I just put the um, link for the stand happening tomorrow, 12 noon your time. Anybody can do it everywhere.
let's get people on board with it. I know it's coming out fast, but we're being able to move faster and faster as watchmen. It's gonna be required of us to shift very quickly. And thank you all for shifting this last uh, daily brief as well. So all that saying, God bless you and thank you all for being on. The journey session um, this week, 6 a.m. Monday, is going to be focusing on what we got out of the 21 days. And so be in prayer what you might want to share for that. It's going to be a family hour. Um, invite, your, invite your friends who may be interested in the Global Watch onto that. But that will be Monday at um, 6 a.m. And we, if you got our email, we'll be starting a new study for the journey in a week from Sunday. And it's called the pre raf by um, Alan Kirshner. It's the short version that if you look on Amazon, but it's a very biblically sound way of looking at the biblical timeline. And it, we, we need to be uh, aware of that as well. I know there's so many dis different eschatologies, but this one I believe is really biblical. It's supported by Alan and uh, Joel Richardson. So those are people that I believe have really sound understanding the timeline so anyway god bless you shabbat shalom thank you denise thank you everyone shabbat shalom thank you denise. Shabbat shalom everyone shabbat shalom. Thank you, denise. Thank you, denise. Thank you, denise. thank you denise.